Good morning, a very warm welcome to St. Michael's Church this morning. Uh, I hope you've seen a copy of the notice sheet, either by email or uh, picked one up as you came in. I just want to mention a few things. Uh, Christmas really is here. We had our first carol service yesterday here in church for the bell ringers, uh, and we start off with our, our, our main carols by candlelight, both next Sunday and the Sunday after, the 12th and the 19th of December, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, they'll both be very similar. Uh, the, only ch the only difference, really, will be the style of music. The first one, we're having the music group, and we're video recording it. Uh, and the second one, uh, we're having the organ for the music. But the, the content will be the same. So do come to either of those, if you'd like to. Come to both, if you'd like to. Uh, and if you're not sure which one to go to, and you can make either, I'd encourage you probably to come along to the first one, because I suspect the second one might be slightly busier, because it's a little bit nearer to Christmas. We've also got um, two uh, particular family events, as well as our family services on, on Christmas Day and Boxing Day. There's a join-in nativity on Saturday the 18th, which is what it sounds like, um, and there's a Chris Stingle service on Christmas Eve. The details of this, um, the, the Christmas Eve communion, um, numbers were dropping a bit from the midnight service. So we're going to do something different this year, and our Christmas Eve communion will be at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. The details of all the services in December uh, through to January are uh, on, on the notice sheet. Um, we, we have a board at the back with a few Christmas cards on it, and if you'd like to give a Christmas card, rather than individually to people in the church, one to the whole of the church family, you're welcome to pin it on there. And if you'd like to, do please make a donation which will go to the work of Hope House, uh, who are seeking to break the cycle of, of homelessness. It's a great Christian charity in Braintree, helping those who, who are homeless. Uh, we've got men's and women's uh, events coming up. Uh, this Saturday, um, we've got men's Christmas cracker. We're, we're going to be, it's from, uh, it's, it's from 10 o'clock, but do come a bit early because there'll be some seasonal refreshments for the men, come perhaps quarter to 10. Uh, it, it's, it's here in church. We're going to have some time worshipping together, and Stephen is going to bring us two thoughts from those wonderful verses in, in Philippians chapter 2, uh, which speak about Jesus who, who gave up the glories of heaven in humility to come to earth and was then honoured and glorified by the Father. So we look forward to what Stephen's be, going to be sharing with us and a short time in discussions in groups. So, so uh, men, do join us if you're able to. And there is a sign-up sheet on the back, at the back which would be really helpful if you could sign up so we've got uh, an idea of numbers for refreshments. Uh, Women at St. Michael have got a Christmas prayer lunch on Tuesday week, Tuesday the 14th, 12 till 2, uh, here, on, here in church. And please let, let Jennifer know uh, if you're going to be uh, planning to come to that, ladies. Uh, we had a gift day last week, and I realized uh, once we'd had the service, I'd forgotten to even mention it. Um, and, and the gift day is, in, um, is towards work in the creche. Um, during the lockdowns, uh, some real damp problems have been coming to light, both through the, through the roof and through the, the walls. Uh, and we want to do some work in the creche uh, because uh, it is a brilliantly positioned creche and we'd really like to have it in, in service again. I wonder, could I have a couple of volunteers to light our, our first two Advent candles, please? Would anyone like to come and do this? Nobody wants to come. I, I, I'm not going to light them myself. Somebody's got to come and light them of any age. Graham. Oh, and Elizabeth, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Uh, and as we light another Advent candle every Sunday during Advent, as we build up to Christmas, we remember different people who looked forward to the coming Messiah that we know is Jesus. And we remember today uh, the prophets, those courageous prophets who, who shared the, the word of God, sometimes at huge personal cost. But let's just be quiet for a moment before Rachel comes to lead us. Well, hello everyone. A huge welcome from me as well. So today in our service, we are going to be hearing from the Bible, and we're going to be hearing about a big banquet. Jennifer is going to be speaking to us later. We're going to be singing some songs together, and in your pews, you may have noticed there are some instruments as well. So if during the songs you would like to, there's no pressure, but if you would like to join in and use those instruments, as, as we lift our voices, then feel free to do that. We're going to be praying in our service today. We're going to be talking to God. And we're also going to be hearing about our mission of the month. That will be a little bit later in the service. But as we start, let's pray together. I'm going to say a prayer. And after each line, I wonder if you can join me with the words, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. So let's pray as we begin our service. As we gather together, let's say together, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we put aside the things that distract us, together we say, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we leave behind the things that worry us, together we say, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we worship you with songs of praise, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we listen to a story from the Bible, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. And as we hear your teaching, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. Amen. Uh, in our first song this morning, we are wonderfully reminded of who God is and all that he has done for us through Jesus. So let's stand together and sing, and don't forget your instruments.
We now come to a time of confession. And we know that when we say sorry to God for the wrong things that we think, we do, and we say, we know that because of Jesus, we can experience complete forgiveness of our sins. So let's confess our sins now. Please join me with the words, save us and help us. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you with humble hearts to confess our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Together we say, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you, by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For acting as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear son Jesus. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Father, we have failed you often and humbly ask your forgiveness. Help us so to live that others may see your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, when we believe and trust in Jesus, our eternal home is heaven. And our next two songs celebrate this. So let's sing together.
now, because we're going to see the King, we celebrate. Come on and celebrate. As you may be able to see, we have got a video that we would love to show you. It involves some people from our church, um, and it is a wonderful introduction to uh, the Bible passage that we are going to be thinking about today. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll maybe watch it later if we can kind of sort our technical problem. Um, 
So what, and we've got another video to show you as well later, but we will go, we will, we will pray now. So Graham is going to lead us in some prayers. As we begin our prayers, let's concentrate. Let's all think. Think of things that we want to pray about. The things that we think are important. Be with us, Lord, as we bring you our problems, our thanks, and our worries. Help us to concentrate on you. We pray now for the whole world and all its people facing COVID, climate change, wars, disruption of living. Help them and help us. Amen. We pray for children and all young ones in all parts of the world. The schools in Braintree, especially St. Michael's. For our mission this month, Stand By Me, helping those unfortunate children throughout the world. Be with all those who try to help. Be with teachers. Be with the missionaries. Helping children. The most put upon people on the planet. And the least able to defend themselves. Lord, hear our prayer. pray for our nation, our Queen and her family, our government, and all others in authority. Be with them. Help them to understand the best ways of doing things. To be thoughtful of all they have responsibility for. To be honest and truthful and to set a good example to all our citizens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we pray for the whole church and especially for St. Michael's here, for our leaders our teachers and helpers of all descriptions. We ask your blessing and be with us as we gather together. We ask for your special blessing on all who are ill, all those on our notice sheet and ourselves if we're not feeling well. Be with us, Lord. Give us courage and strength to overcome the difficulties. Help us to worship you with our whole hearts and minds. We look forward to Christmas when we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. Keep us all safe and give us grace to look for all who need help and encouragement. Be with us all. Amen.
a few Fibonacci falls this afternoon. Well, remember, we're going to be looking at nuclear physics in relation to calculus. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want, madam? Oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, I'd like to ask want? you to my party. Well, oh, I can't be bothered at your party. Oh, it's more important to educate these poor Fibonacci falls here. Oh, go away. Go oh, away. I'm sorry to disturb oh, you. Go away. Go away. Fabian. Hi, David. Do you want to come to my party? Oh, wow, a party. I'd love to, but I've got so much work to do, I'm really busy. I'm really sorry, I can't come. Oh, all right, well, don't work too hard. Bye. Bye. So sorry, Janet. It sounds lovely, but I've just bought a new car oh. and I've really got to get it clean oh, and dear. polished and everything. Oh, I'm so I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to come. Oh, dear, are oh, we going to miss you? Oh, thank you. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Bye bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> New Testament reading is on page 105.2 of the Pew Bibles, and it's Luke 14, 15, sorry, 12 to, sorry, 15 to 25, okay, and it is regarding the parable of the great banquet. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will break, eat, and break the... Eat and break the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who'd been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But the all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please excuse me. Then another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to examine them. Please excuse me. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. And then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city. Bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and there is still room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the word of the Lord. So 
so a prayer. Lord God, make this a special time for us now as you speak to us through your word. For Jesus' sake, amen. Now we're at a very important, exciting time of the year, 2021. It's December, and we know that it's nearly Christmas. And the church is all set up um, for our school's Christmas experience, uh, which some of you over the years will have taken part in. And we know, all of us, that Christmas is coming, and it's a really exciting time. And if you've got your decorated plates, you will need them later in the service, so have them ready. Now, in churches, too, it's a really important time. It's an exciting time, and churches are different because their year, the church's year, began last Sunday when we lit our first Advent candle. And we're now in what we call the season of Advent. And we need our eyes at this time of the year to be looking forward and we need our eyes to be looking backwards. And I wonder if your you or your mum or maybe your teacher has ever said to you, I have eyes in the back of my head. Well, this morning you need eyes in the back of your head to look back to the promises that God made and God planned a long time ago, promising to send Jesus into the world. And then you need your eyes looking back still to that very first Christmas when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And we will be celebrating that in 20 days' time. But Advent is more than just about Christmas. Because in our Bible reading that Rod read, a story, a parable that Jesus told, Jesus tells us that we can use our eyes looking forward to an event that will happen in the future. When there will be a big and even more than big, a great banquet. And that will happen. And we need our eyes looking forward to that time. So imagine in your mind the biggest, the best party, the best celebration meal, uh, the best Christmas that you've ever had, well or that you would even like to go to well the big banquet the great banquet the feast in this story is a billion zillion times better than that more wonderful and the bible tells us that one day jesus will host right at the very end of time a celebration that will be better and more wonderful than anything that we can imagine or have ever known so let's go to the great banquet in our story. An invitation is sent out. A man gave a big banquet and invited many people. They all had their invites and way back in Jesus' time, the invites would go out and when everything was ready, the host would be so happy, he would send his servant to say to the people he'd invited, everything is ready, come. The places would be laid, the plates of food would be all there, and their names by the plates. So who's got plates? Can I have a look? Quite a lot. Plates ready. And so there the banquet's ready, plates of food all ready, and the people are told, come. And then he could look forward to welcoming all these people he'd invited to the feast. But then it was so sad. Excuses and excuses and more excuses. And actually, they weren't very good excuses either. Now, hands up those in church who liked our drama this morning. It was very good. I thought they were really excellent. So, in the drama we saw, no one wanted to go to the party. They were sad. They had excuses, more important things to do. They were busy. But in our story, more invitations were sent out. The servants were sent out to invite more people to the party and to invite those who would probably never get invited to a party. And they were sent out so that every seat at the banquet would be filled and the celebrations could begin. And so every person was invited, 
personally come to the banquet and come, it's ready, you're invited. Now Jesus told that story a long time ago, but what is he telling us today? Jesus tells us that when he comes back, as he's promised, there will be a banquet, a celebration, and this celebration is for every person who has accepted the invitation to believe and trust in Jesus. So we use our forward-looking eyes to see that party, that celebration, that banquet, that we are invited to. And we're going to sing about that in a minute. But sometimes people want to make excuses. They want to find things that... Uh, will keep them from accepting the invitation that Jesus gives, or maybe it seems hard, or maybe they're just too busy. Now, can you hold up for me the plates that you've decorated? Make sure those around who haven't decorated one can see your plate and your name on it. And I had a special reason when we were planning this service for making plates this morning, because when you go to a party, that you've been invited to, you are there because you've accepted the invitation and there will be a place for you at that party, a place saved for you, a plate there for you with your name on. You won't have to worry where you are or where you will sit or where you will go or what you will have to do. That plate will be there, your name decorated for you. You will be expected you will be looked after, you will be safe, you will be happy, you will be secure. And this is what the Bible says when we get to that great promised celebration day, the banquet in heaven, there will be your place, your name, and you will be welcomed by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You will be so welcome that you will feel safe, you will feel secure, you will feel happy, you will have no worries of any kind. But you have to have been invited. And you have to have accepted the invitation. So I want us to do one more thing this morning. Use your backward eyes and look to that very first Christmas. When Joseph told Mary that she was to have a baby, he said, you will call his name Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. And the shepherds, uh, the angel said to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. And Jesus was born using your backward eyes. See the stable and Jesus born. And he would live to do amazing things. He would die on the cross. He would rise again all because he loved us so much. And he wanted all of us here to be at the banquet. And the only possible way for us to be there was for him to be born, to live, to die, to rise again, and to be back in heaven with God. And he was willing to be born into our world to do this because he loved us so much. So Jesus came into our world with an invitation. Come to me. Trust me. Ask me to take everything away that is wrong in your life. And then love me and walk with me all the way to this great banquet that will be one day. Now let's use our today eyes and see what the invitation says. Now these words are a paraphrase of John chapter 1 verse 12. Or if you've got the Jesus Storybook Bible, it's right at the very back. For anyone who says yes to Jesus, for anyone who believes what Jesus said, for anyone who will reach out and take it, then God will give them this wonderful gift, a whole new life as God's child. And that is the invitation that is given to us this morning. And it's sad to make excuses it's sad to miss out on all that Jesus is inviting us to be part of, not just in the future, but now and right into that future. And I don't think there will be people at St. Michael's making excuses, will there? 
and I can see as I look around many of you whom I know have accepted the invitation that Jesus made to you. And you are really happy that you said yes to the invitation. But maybe there is someone here this morning who's thinking in their hearts and their minds, I really want to accept the invitation that Jesus is offering to me. And so can you hold up your plates again for me? Because Jesus promises to everyone here who has accepted or accepts today by saying that they want to be part of God's family, they accept this invitation to his banquet, there will be a place, as it were. There will be a place, a special place, with your name on it at that great banquet. So let's just have a quiet as we think about that banquet, as we look back to Christmas, look forward to the banquet, and think about the invitation that Jesus makes to each one of us and promising to give us this wonderful gift. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift that you have given us in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that we can accept this invitation and we can live whole new lives as your children. Help us to understand these things and may each one of us here have accepted the invitation that you give to us. Amen. So as Christians, we are looking forward to a better day. <clears throat> Let's sing together, he's coming back again. Brilliant. Okay. It'll be on the screen. Taken away. No more sin or darkness. Every wrong made right. Jesus Christ is coming and he is the light. He's coming back again because he promised to.
So in a moment, I am going to close with a prayer. Uh, But just to mention, after I've said the prayer, uh, there are going to be refreshments today available from at the back of church. Um, But can we just ask that we kind of, (laughs) we go kind of in single file. And also, over there, there is a wonderful um, Advent display on the floor, which is part of our... um, experience Christmas Um, so if we can just try our very best to kind of avoid that and um, yeah just go a few at a time uh, that would be wonderful Uh, let's pray together Um, and in this closing prayer I wonder if you can say the words go with us Lord after each line as we leave this place together we say go with us Lord as we begin a new week Go with us, Lord. As we encounter new experiences, go with us, Lord. As we meet old friends and new, go with us, Lord. In everything we do in the week ahead, go with us, Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming and enjoy your refreshments, and we look forward to chatting together.